Hi everyone, today I'm trying Jingo S 0.8. Sorry about the image quality, but I could not get a screen recorder running. First of all, let me say that I was very impressed by the gestures that are touchpad one to one, meaning that I can go back and forth just like this, which is very impressed considering that KDE Plasma does not have this. Also, there are touch screen gestures that are also very nice to see and they work very nicely, so big thumbs up regarding this. Then we can see the applications. First of all the files, which is very aesthetically pleasing. And if we go back, we can see also the calendar, which again looks very nice. In general, all of Jingo S and its application are very well designed. Here I, uh, you can see that I'm trying to create a new event, however the virtual keyboard is not popping up because I do have the physical keyboard. Anyway, we can also see the photo application which actually lets you sort based on photos and videos. If I go to the video section there's the default video with a bit of promotion about Jingo S and it's a simple music uh, video player, but that's what I expected. There's also the calculator, which looks pretty nice, in line with the design of Jingo S. The gradient on the bottom left is very nice, and I mean, it's a calculator. And then we also have the clock, which again, uh, is very nicely designed, although I think that this gradient is a bit too much compared to the others. We can start a stopwatch, but also set a timer. And you can really see that it's designed to be a touch interface. It works much better there. There are a couple of bugs, but that's something that I had expected. The animations are really nice. I also tried to use the spreadsheet and writer apps, but unluckily they did not work. So we also have a notification center, which looks pretty. It's not transparent and blurred as in the GIFs, but it looks okay. And then we also have a system tray, and if we held Wi-Fi, we get into the new system settings, which are really nicely designed. Even though there are a few settings that you can actually change from here yet, this will probably improve in the future. If we go back to the home screen, we can also see that we still have the KDE system settings, although not all KCMs are present. And we can, as an example, change the global theme of Jingo S. However, don't do this because it will actually crash. But never mind, that's not something you're expected to do. So upon reboot, I did get a discover notification that I could not swipe away, I guess that's a bug. And then I try to play a bit with unpinning and pinning apps to the task manager. And that's something that worked really well. And then there's also the software manager, which right now uh, has only a few apps, but I think that's a bug of my installation because I've seen other reviewers getting more apps here. As an example, I try installing LMMS and it works nicely. And it also looks very nice, which is something that I just got used to after after using a bit of Jingo S. So what else do we have? The camera. You can actually see me here. Hello, this is me. This is the best setup that I managed to get. A terrible one, but never mind. So closing remarks, I think that the OS is quite impressive given how early it is. I do think that it will improve so much in the future. It's probably not 3D for most customers, but it's totally a great beginning. I'm a bit concerned about some lic licensing issues that we've got with KDE files, but the KDE community reached out to the Jingo S1, so I expect that to be fixed soon. I've also seen that they've announced a new tablet, the Jing Pad, which I'm li really looking forward to review. So that was all. If you wish to contribute to this channel or help me buy a new camera, you know, you can subscribe to my Patreon or PayPal.